Because I'm like, I wanted to be a serious artist, but that failed, so I'm back, and I'm broke. Um, and no, no, it didn't fail. We're doing all right. $10 a show. Um, and I want to thank my guys, my guys, not my guys, or everybody's guys. We're not together. We're friends. But that's okay if we are. Uh, these are da your Dan, Deacon, uh, Martin, Casey. He's my roommate. Doesn't talk that much. It's awkward. No, it's not awkward. It's fine. Um, it's not, uh, don't be mad. They, somebody dropped that earlier, that saxophone. Trumpet? Is it trumpet? Oh. Um, and then this is Garrett Welmers of the band Future Islands with that sexy lead singer Sam. I like him. Sam's awesome. Uh, and then Devlin, Devlin, heart of gold, guy carried me on his back through America and Europe. Literally, I slept and I don't have a license. So, uh, and then, but oh, fucking awesome, dude. I shouldn't be swearing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. Classy. Uh, and this is Jeremy Hyman. He and he is also a good friend. And he lives in my girlfriend's apartment building, um, but they're just friends. And, and then it's like, you know, because these days when a guy and a girl live together, uh, it's like frowned upon in the Catholic community. And this is, this is Connor, and he was also in the band Ponytail. Awesome, man. Um, fucking, it's cool, man. Molly lives in Arizona now. Um, I did not drop acid before this show. Um, this is Connor. I don't, this is the only time I see Connor, so I have to make these shows so we can hang out. Because you do weird call center jobs and you disappear and go to like the desert for months at a time. But yeah, what? anyways. An opening monologue by Ed anyways, Schrader! <laughs> so we were, so we just got back from overseas and this is like my first time out of the country, you know? So everything, 
it's like my first time out of the country and I'm just looking around and, you know, me and Devlin just like wide-eyed, bushy-tailed and checking stuff out. And, and you know, and it's like, you know, every, it's like a first everything. Every day is like a first thing. First, first castle, first knight in shining armor, first, um, first uh, pub. We have, we have a pub here called Liam's Pub. That's, that's perfectly fine too. And that, that can be a pub and there's nothing wrong with that. And I went into a bathroom it was, this isn't even the scripted stuff yet. This is, you're getting seven bucks, the two more dollars. This is the two extra. Ad lib. Two extra dollars. Um, so anyways, I'm in London, uh, and you know, I'm walking with Devlin, and we're like, hey, I want to go get a Starbucks. Get a Starbucks. Now, I don't have that much money, you know, they don't pay that good. But uh, I go into a Starbucks, and I go to use the bathroom, and I'm like, oh, this bathroom is cool, man. And I notice, I'm like, oh, and I see like, oh, they got a cool like lever instead of a regular thing. So I thought that that was the flushing mechanism. It was an, an, I pulled it, alarms started going off, people were knocking on the door, and I, uh, I, I, I continued to go to the bathroom because I did not understand that this was an emergency lever that you pull uh, if you're like retired uh, and you have a bladder problem. And I also, uh, well, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's great. And, it's, and I also, we were in uh, the Czech Republic or Switzerland, and I didn't know, and I, you don't know what to say to these people, not Europeans, but like, when you're in Switzerland, you don't know what to say because it's like you don't speak the language. It's different. And, and I'm over there, and, uh, and we're standing outside, I'm standing outside having a cigarette, and everyone keeps being like, oh, the toilet uh, today. There's a toilet uh, and, uh, today. Oh, well, you'll see the toilet. And I'm like, oh, that's... I could just go use it. He's like, no, there'll be a special toilet today for you. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. And I thought it was like, maybe they're being ironic or like, you know, it's this weird, our kids and stuff. And then all of a sudden, I'm not kidding, uh, like a big truck pulls up with like a crane and like drops like a, a huge porta potty. Like it was like, you know, it's just like boo, boo, boo. And then just like drops this porta potty. And, and then so I go upstairs and I'm, you know, doing my show and I can't speak the language. So I just kept being like, the toilet is great. We see it outside. I kiss the toilet. We should all kiss the. And then they're just like laughing kind of at me. But. Yeah, and so that's what I did in Europe, and that's how I represented the city of Baltimore. But let's start the show. We got a great one tonight. We got Matmos, we got DDM, we got some other stuff too. But let's start out, let's do a monologue. All right, and holding up the monologue card tonight is Dina Kebelman, city paper comic book person. Cue card girl, Dina Kelberman. I said, I, I say person, he says girl. Um, but anyways. No, it's... I know what she is. You're, you're a friend. <laughs> They're friends, so th this is cool. Okay, so uh, here we go. So Kim Kardashian is pregnant again. Who's the lucky semen responsible for that jizz? Oh, it's the lucky sperm. Let's start over again. <laughs> so, uh, so Kim Kardashian is pregnant again. Who's the lucky sperm responsible for that jizz? Don't mind me, folks. I'm Ed Schrader, and I'm horny up here. <laughs> Had some. Why do they always name ma major storms after bitchy women? Jeez. So I guess Hillary Clinton was in the hospital this week. Did you hear about this? I'm sick of all these atrocities all over the world. I'm horny up here. I'm, um, I'm, I'm sitting on the toilet the other day and I've just released and I'm cleaning my downtown Abbey with dry, hard paper, and then I get up and immediately go to the sink and wash my hands with water and soap. And I'm thinking, uh, is there something wrong with this picture? I regret my choices in life. Oh, that's, somebody, somebody felt that, that was an extra one that someone added. Friends, with friends like that. Now recently, like everyone, I went to see The Hobbit, but I gotta tell you, and this is like an honest thing, this, it, I mean, it's a monologue joke, but it's an interesting story. I gotta tell you, the, the place where I saw it, it was weird. There was, um, like, how do I say it? There was um, jizz everywhere. <laughs> Turns out I was watching Hobbit Hole Slammer starring Dildo Baggins and Rumple Foreskin. Um, that's... Um, so I was walking the dog yesterday and sucked my fucking dick. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't write that last thing. Uh, um, now, when did that happen? Now, 
Now, folks, I gotta tell you, I'm kind of honored, uh, this, is, this is true, to be reporting to you the next bit of music news. Well, I can't believe I'm saying it. Um, David Bowie has a new album coming out this spring. Now, this is, gonna, this is gonna be a real treat for the fans. It's an EP of covers, novelty songs, and some rehashings of his old hits with songs like What a Man, featuring Annie Lennox. Station to Station, is there anything on? Sick <laughs> I love that one. Z You're gonna love this. Ziggy Strikes Back, featuring Darth Vader. <laughs> this is goofy. Um, 99 Bottles of Beer on the Wall, featuring Elton John. They both don't drink anymore. Funny. Um, okay, so I'm Ed, and here we go. Let's start the show. Now, the Ed Schrader Show, featuring Ed Schrader, your host. That's a can of PBR. Oh, that's not the microphone. That's a can of PBR right there with a flag in it. And I think you might recognize that flag. It is your flag of your city. Where the city is and where the mayor lives. State. It's the, oh, the, oh, sorry. It's the state flag. The state flag. Uh, uh, we don't need a song for that. Um, I think I'm running about 20 minutes over my monologue. Um, but this is uh, the state flag. And... Uh, it's just comprised of uh, different semiotics and messages used through symbolism that represent different things that had happened throughout the state's history. So you got, uh, we got the uh, Grand Prix race here that we all know about. <laughs> then we got uh, the time two bloody-faced men crashed into each other in front of a pile of vanilla ice cream. Uh, and <laughs> Who doesn't love Maryland? Okay, uh, oh yeah, so uh, I, I'm gonna turn into a different person right before your very eyes. Hello, I'm Batman. Uh -huh. No, I'm not. I'm not Batman. That's Kiefer Sutherland. No. What? No, 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 no. The, the other guy. Toe for Grace. Uh, who do you in the blue? It's George Clooney. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, no, I like the one that Mr. Pop, Mr. Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. Uh, okay, hold on. I, I should do this more uh, gracefully. But, uh, okay, uh, oh yeah, I gotta be able to see this. <laughs> Ed Schrader regular, the Oh My God guy. Oh my God, how's it going, everybody? Okay, so uh, it's the other night, I was on a hot date with... Oh, all these jokes are about Indian restaurants. So, just here, yeah. so the other night, I was on a hot date with Molly Kofka. She, uh... She, I'm gonna start over again. Uh, so the other night, I... Is it, is it Kofta? Kofka. Kofta. Just go with it, man. Uh, Indian food. Kofta? Yeah, Kof Molly Kafka. Kafka. A lot of liberals in here. Um, so, the, so the other night I was on a hot date with Molly Kafka. She says, hold on, before we go any further, I got something to tell you. My real name's Rogan Josh. Oh my God. It's different types of food you can get in an Indian restaurant. Um, I, tell, I tell you, my Kumari days are over. Every time I try banging Bertha, yellow doll comes out of my Punjab. Hey, I'd rather get none than put up with that. Oh my God! <laughs> that was funny. Um, uh, went to Mughal Garden the other day. I, uh, I oh yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, well, I went to Mughal Garden the other day. I tripped and spilled my food everywhere. All the Micah kids looked at the floor and started clapping. Hey, they thought I was a regular Jackson Pollock paneer. Oh my God! <laughs> Jackson Pollock uh, was known for doing these kind of like splashy type things. And uh, I thought this was kind of analogous to the food falling on the floor and stuff. Um, so I went to see Cat Power the other... What the fuck? joke about Cat Power. Like, I don't know. I was, I, was, I was actually stoned when I wrote this one. Parenthetically speaking, I just want to tell you that. Uh, so I went to see Cat Power the other night. Uh, how many people like Cat Power? Am I, the, I think I might be... Me and Brian Nicholson are going to love this joke. Um, so I went to see Cat Power the other night. I tell you... Chana Masala is really slipping. She dumped Mango Lassie all over the piano and took a shit in the middle of the stage. Oh my God! Weird show that was. Okay, so last one. I tell you, it's stressful at the Indian restaurant. I was eating lamb chop till she looked up and said, "Hey, buddy, I'm a puppet." Remember, uh, lamb chop. Uh, A 
All right, everybody. The Oh My God Guys regular appearance on the Ed Trader Show. Okay, now I'm going to do this. Now I'm going to do this awkward, janky thing. You know what I love? I love about these sunglasses. I noticed uh, Kevin Sherry let me borrow these. And these are supposed to be so you can see the person behind you. But couldn't they have like picked a less like fucking weird looking sunglasses? Is this like, like nobody knows I'm doing anything strange? I'm just hanging out, being normal here. I'm in line at the grocery store. Don't notice me here. I, it's like so, it's, it, this. This should be round or something. Okay. Um, my next guest um, uh, need no introduction. Uh, they moved here recently. Well, five years ago from San Francisco. <laughs> Uh, depending on, you know, your view of time. Um, and, you know, they have really, really awesome dudes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mott Mouse. A couple of great guys to go to breakfast with, Matmos. Okay. So, uh, so now this is Matmos uh, 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 sitting right here. This is Drew from Matmos, and that is Martin from Matmos. Two different people, um, and they, well, obviously, obviously, uh, and they have the band called Matmos. Um, and if you haven't heard the band, if you like Simply Red or Toad in the Wet Sprocket, you're gonna love Matmos checking out. Uh, that's a joke. Uh, that's that extra two dollars. Um, now, um, but I wanted to, you know, we're gonna do the interview and all that, but I thought this would be fun. Or maybe we should save this bit for the end because that's the funky thing you do on the talk shows. You know, you, you do the fun, you do the fun weird thing at the end, right? No, no, let's do, let's do a fun weird thing in the beginning and the end. Okay. Um, so maybe we should skip the interview and just fuck with this stuff. Um, so, so anyways, I told them to bring different objects from the house and uh, we all have to guess which ones belong to who. So the first thing we have, the first thing we have is, oh, do you have the microphone? Um, is a fish thing. Hello, oh, Ed. Hi. 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 <laughs> Sorry. How are you? I met you guys at the Golden West once. Uh, I worked at the Golden West at one point, and I was helping uh, clean up the tables, and these guys were like, hey, come here, and really nice. And, uh, <laughs> and then started beating me to death. No. Uh, they, uh, they were really cool, and they were like, oh, you know, like, your music, is, yeah, we talked. So this is a, a fish thing that, um, it's a slipper of some kind, and you can do... Uh, this is like Liar's Club a what? little bit, right? Uh, wait, what's Liar's Club? Yeah, uh, never mind. Okay. <laughs> One of my favorite albums. Oh, uh, there. There's a little noise reference It was a you. game show where, you, where they had an object, and the panel had to guess what... Oh, had cool. to lie about what the object was. Oh, and okay. The, and the contestants had to guess who was right. Oh. Any, anyone who's like 60 or older, as much such as myself, will remember this game oh. show. No, but you look very young. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yes, I do. No, it does. <laughs> well, I mean, you dress really good and uh, you look great. It helps. Sorry. Oh, no, it's, no, it's good. Um, well, and then it's got, so this is a fish uh, slipper type thing. And it belongs, uh, what, uh, I'm going to say, oh, I'm sorry, here you go. That's a fish. It's a fish slipper, I believe. <laughs> and, um, Matmos's fish slipper uh, on yeah. the Ed Trader so, Show. Who do you think owns the Matmos fish slipper? I, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's Drew. Drew. It's like, well, because you know Pisces, your professor of uh, mythology, and the fish, the fish represents God. God and God's often mentioned in books, like they say, like. Uh, that's a, like, God, what is it when they always say, like, when God's mentioned in a book, there's like, oh, Jesus imagery or something. Speaking of Jesus, hi, how you doing? Hey, uh, let's give this guy a hand, eh? This is, uh, you know. Say, Ed, I, 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 excuse me for interrupting you, it's hi. Martin over here. Oh, hi, Martin. Um, hi. Oh, did you hi, want to talk about the fish? Because the fish's got a good story. That wasn't it's a Zikaya, by the way. It's, it's actually. No, no, speaking of which, we have a, you talk about the time you had a beer with a Nazi in Germany in Hitler's old pub. No, but we'll talk about that. We'll get to that. All right, never mind. No, 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 no. It's not some Raiders of the Lost Ark shit. It's well, cool. it's um, not actually a slipper. So what is this? It's, it's gummy. It's kind of like a It's maybe. my jock strap. 
<laughs> oh, so. um, I used wait. to strip for cash when I was an undergrad at Jesus, Berkeley. Jesus, wait, did you actually wear that? And I was wearing that on stage at Club Uranus um, the first, yeah. the the first, first night that I met Martin. He put a dollar in that G-string. So I used to insert my junk inside the fish. <laughs> or you could say it really is a cod piece. That was the best joke of the night. That's, yes, it was. That's how bad the show is that that was the best joke of the night. The cod piece. No, but you're the... Um, but let's just say you had the strip thing, so that's how you guys met each other. This was in San Francisco, home of the San Francisco Giants baseball. San Francisco. Um, but the, so, literally a cod piece. Uh, now, this hand. It's got veins and stuff, and it looks like a real hand. Um, oh, and it's got some stuff at the bottom. You can do, it looks like it hooks onto something. This looks like, I'm gonna say Martin, because it's very like, it's like a statue, it's like architecture, it's like, you know. It's... You are correct. Okay, yeah. That's my hand. Ed gets it right. <laughs> Fair, uh, yeah, who do you think this is, folks? Which guy does this belong to? What? <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, that, that's true. I did. It's me. I, we did, we established that. Okay, we have another piece of a fish thing. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming this is the piece of the cod piece that broke yeah, off. Yeah, I think it's like oh. that the goes years, in back. Years of testicular like uh, sweat have rotted the plastic. But Professor at Johns Hopkins, <laughs> your forty thousand dollars a semester can go a long way. Um, I'm gonna assume this guy looks very professorly, like he, and he it looks like he's holding a book. Speaking of which, this guy has a book coming out soon. Um, uh, it's uh, I'm gonna say that's yours, little. No. <laughs> What, uh, what do you guys think? Uh, is it the perform? Oh, here you go. Ed gets it wrong. Okay. I'm going to say, well, that's obviously yours. Process of elimination, deduction, philosophy, English. Hey. Um, then we got... Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's Q. Snakehead. Q, that... The, that Q? fella you were holding, that's cute. You got a name for the snake. No, not the snake, the oh, figurine. Oh. Figurine. Oh. M. Q. That's the... Who's the boss? Is M or Q? Oh, James that's Tony Thompson. Ganza. Hey, oh, who's the boss? Bruce Springsteen, perhaps? Dancing in the dark? M is the boss, Q is the tech guy. It's M. Oh, what are you guys talking about? Before M was played by... What's M? Judy Dench. Judy Dench! That's oh, Judy Dench. I know Dench. Judy Dench, Dame Judy that's Dench. That's a Judy Dench statuette. I'm in Durham. Over. Sorry. Judy Dench is a, she's a handsome woman. Um, now we have, uh, we have a snake head. I'm gonna say that's Drew's because you like weird slimy stuff. Yes. Because, you know, you're friends with me. Wait, Ed, okay. ask us! Oh, uh, what do you guys think this belongs to? <laughs> it's either Drew, Drew or Martin. I'll give you a hint, it's Drew or Martin. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay, they're, they're, they apparently can, they don't they understand the game. They hear us when we're talking before. Oh, okay. So what, now we got... What is that? Do your doing great that, that is not even, that's just that's like yours. junk in that hat. Oh, that's not, you, this just has nothing to do with the bit. Martin was improvising and somebody handed this to him while he was playing. It just says, you're doing great, Martin. That's not even supposed to be in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're doing great. Oh, yeah, so now this is, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I could actually get a disease from touching this. Uh, this, the dying, dying corpse that is dead is gross. It is a mouse. It, what, did you it's guys the, know what this is? It's the skinned head of a rat. Okay. Thank you for that. Nice. Well, there's the hat itself. And the, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, what is this stuff that just came out of the hat? That's dead rat stuff. God. Okay. Uh, who does the hat belong to? The dead rat pieces in it. Uh, I can only seem to focus on that part Ask right now. Ask the audience. Oh, what do you Ed? think, guys? Who would own a hat with uh, the dead rat body pieces? Martin. Martin. Drew. Martin. Who's a, who looks more like a cowboy? I think Martin does. Martin. Cowboy man. The cowboy man. Hey. Um, what do you think? Hey, Indiana Jones? Uh, I, 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 how, do, where do, how do we resolve this now? That they uh, who do you think? I think uh, Martin, is it yours? Oh, yeah. Put that. Put, yeah, um, you might like want to get a tetanus shot after that. If the hat fits, must have quit. I think we found our Cinderella. Okay. Now I want to talk to you guys. It's Drew's. So, okay, so we chatted. Uh, it looks better in it. He looks better in it. <laughs> but, but it is Drew's. 
So now I got to chat with you guys the other night, and listening to your albums, you know, one might wonder where did these ideas come from. And Martin, I want to direct this first question at you. What were the? You mentioned this to me, and I found it interesting. What were the earliest soundscapes you can recall growing up in Burlingame, California? Um, you mentioned uh, you mentioned the other day like something involving opera, buzz saws. I, yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> this is how these things work. I get it. You talk to me, and then yeah. Three um, cool uh, questions. It's gonna be twenty cool <laughs> questions. Sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, Don't listen. Um, <laughs> oh. Well, um, I grew up in, uh, in the city where, in the town where the San Francisco airport is, and um, my father uh, built, uh, made furniture uh, on the weekends, and he was an opera fan, and so it's true that every Sunday I would wake up to the sound of jet planes flying over with opera loud enough to be heard over a circular saw. Wow. That was every weekend for the first 13 years of my life. Do you think life. that that had an impact or was there a connection with that? Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. True. It's, it's very butch and very femme at the same time, right? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> okay, so now Drew, this next question is for you. It's 1988. I'm standing behind you at Royal Farms. I'm not doing anything fresh. Um, and we're in Kentucky, where you grew up. What would I see standing before me? What would Three you... cool questions. These are... <laughs> Shit, 1988. Because um, you were from Kentucky, now Drew's yeah, from Kentucky. Yeah, I was in a sort of emo meets industrial, which nobody wants. Nine Inch Nails meets band. Weezer, we got yeah, to. Yeah, it was, it, was it was a dark time. I was a closet case doing a punk rock scene. Um, and worshiping the misfits. I have a devil lock in the high school yearbook picture that's like hanging oh, nice. below my chin. What's a devil? Uh, what's a, a devil? Devil? Devil lock? Yeah, what's like it? like a Glenn Danzig worshiping like like stalactite or ice bowl oh. of hair that gets mm. in your soup. Nice. Yeah, I was like. Sounds like. Something. I wanted to be a skater, but I wasn't like fit Could enough. It. So. Kind of do the ever all the. I was on the math league actually. I won a trophy for doing. Oh, cool. That. Yeah. Math and science. Um, now, what? So, so, what were what were you listening to at the time? And like, like, how? And how did you hear about these bands? Because you're in Kentucky. It's kind of away from the. Yeah. No, I had a psychoanalyst. Wait, what happened to the Royal Farms? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. What, 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 what were Which you wearing? they don't have in Kentucky. Oh, they but... don't. <laughs> hey. Well, whatever it is. Uh, uh, Kentucky had... Farms. We didn't have Bernie. KFC. <laughs> KFC. I bet they got that like, Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's no, good. I live behind a Lee's famous chicken recipe. Um, on a street called Rebel Road, so it was Rebel, very, Rebel. very southern. Yeah. Um, and at the time, it, I mean, I, there wasn't like Burning Man, but I, I had the equivalent of an art car in the sense that I had like weird shit glued to my car and and Charles Manson's face on the door. Ooh. So the entire door was it was just this like. Please, Don't drive by Roman Polanski's house. It's hey. like a giant. Beat me up. Sign. His wife got <laughs> murdered by Charles Manson's people. <laughs> Bowie in Louisville. So. So you were kind of like a punk rock dude in Kentucky, kind of out of place, fish out of water. Yeah. You know, like the kind of piece. But I also made hip hop beats. I had some friends that. You did made it. so you made hip hop beats like rap. Yeah, like, there was these people like uh, kids in high school that had a hip hop crew called King G and the J Crew. That's awesome. <laughs> and I was Deadly D. I made. That's beats. that's awesome. Um, okay, so now, do, oh yeah, so back to Kentucky. Uh, you were you were going through a phase where you were really struck by. You were talking about this fanaticism, gospel, punk, and hardcore, and you spoke. I mean, what is what is the connection between all those things? Like what? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, why? When, when I left Kentucky for college, I went to Berkeley, California, and everybody was very cool and sort of bored with punk rock, and everybody had had that in their life forever. And I missed the sort of intensity of Southern hardcore, where it was like joining the army or a cult or something. Yeah. And so I, I quit going to hardcore shows and I joined a gospel choir and started singing a gospel choir because I liked the sort of fanaticism and intensity of it. It struck me as the same as punk rock because there's people who really believe in what they're saying, it, where it's not about irony, it's not about putting some kind of condom on your mind and protecting yeah. yourself from risk, but about, it's really, not about really believing in what you're doing. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the common thread, I guess. Cool, and just that intensity, because you talk about your own music being very cerebral and and trying to disconnect from emotion. So it's yeah. almost it's very interesting that your kind of inspiration or mm -hmm. you, you know what spurred you on early was this thing that is well, what, seeming to be on the opposite. Yeah, it's true. I mean, what we saw with those objects, right, is that objects can trigger emotions that are separate from thinking. 
right? You were just touching all these objects, and they weren't expressing emotions. But they and the were, audience wasn't produced, thinking who does it belong to. Right, but they produced emotions in the room, right? Feelings of touching yeah. something disgusting, like feeling connected to the world. That's feeling. not about an idea. It's about feeling something real or feeling. touching something real. Um, hey, man. Sorry, I'm kind of drunk. No, that was good. That was good stuff, man. Okay, so now, Martin, um, back when you were one of only three punks in the entire town of Burlingame, California, how did you go about finding weird, noisy music? I mean, the other day you mentioned, uh, you know, you go to the record store and noise music would be mixed in with New Age. I, you know, honestly, that was, that was electronic music that was mixed oh, in with the, music, with the yeah. New Age. I, I didn't, I didn't have rhythmics. a huge interest in noise at that point, but, uh, but I'm kind I'm, Kind of thinking we're in that conversation we were the other day, oh, okay. and they weren't in that. So yeah, I'm not okay. Sure let's go to the next. Three cool oh, question. Oh, okay, well we we touched on that, but um, for the audience's sake, I wanted to see if you could tell us about. Uh, you, you were talking about these like schizophrenic kind of mixtapes your brother would make you when you were in Germany to kind of report to you what's going on in America. Yeah. Like, uh, yes. What, what do you do? You want me to list the? Yeah, they would be like tapes with like. The Blues Brothers and Blondie <laughs> and the Ramones and, uh, you know, Steely Dan yeah, all on like the it. same cassette. He was like, sort of like, this is your primer in what it is to be It's like, here's the cool stuff that grown up. Stateside. Yeah, because yeah, I didn't listen to anything but classical music until I was like 17. Yeah, I mean, th so now in Germany, what, did that affect you musically when you were over there? Was that like the beginning of kind of you getting into the weird stuff? I did try to, like kids at school talked about like, well, yeah, I listen to the radio when I'm doing homework. And I was like, wow, you could do that, couldn't yeah. you? And I definitely remember hearing uh, Peter Gabriel for the first time and yeah. really thinking that that was... That was something I, it was Games Without Frontiers. Yeah, Games Without and I, Frontiers. Which was like an actual hit in Germany right then. Yeah. And, uh, and I really liked that, though I didn't know who he was for another six, seven years after that. I started listening only to the stuff that would get me not beat up, which was Black Sabbath, uh, Deep Purple, strangely enough. Uh, <laughs> bad Company. They, wait, no, wait, Bad um, Company. Yeah, Bad Company. Like before, I, if I think that you know, before they had like soft hits, yeah. they were like kind of a badass, kind of like cool. southern rock band, kind of. They're like Uncle Cracker style. Right. No, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're yeah. right. Everything's. Great. But I mean, my whole goal in listening to all that music was just to not get beat up anymore. <laughs> Well, because at like, the time, I mean, were you, did you uh, identify or realize at that point um, that, you know, I am gay? And, uh, like, oh, it had nothing. It was all, it was oh, all. Oh, this is music This stuff. was just nerd. Oh, no, no, okay. Oh, okay. Like, I don't, I didn't even know I was gay, oh, okay. let alone anyone else. They you, were beating me up because I was just a fucking nerd loser. So they had, uh, yes. <laughs> so you, but you were also telling me how you had, like, the long hair and were smoking Well, marbles. yeah, I, grew, I mean, I grew long. I was like, oh, you have to listen to rock music have long hair and smoke Marlboro cigarettes and people will stop beating me up. And they absolutely did. So it, it worked so like everybody. a dream. Okay. Now, kids, Drew. kids, you can do this. Now, um, now around the, the time that you guys met in San Francisco, what you were talking about this, the cultural transition in the gay community. Um, what was, you know, was that transition happening was that feeding uh, the music and the art scene there, or were those things separate from each other? Yeah, it was a really weird time because, like, Early I associated gayness with, like, bad clone styling and erasure, and I thought, well, I like black flags. The Bronski beat. Yeah, like, I like black flags, so I can't be gay. And then, like, when I came to this San Francisco, it was around the time of ACT UP and, and Queer Nation, a lot of AIDS activism and a lot of rage, and suddenly, like, queer culture was itself about extremes and aggression and a certain facing like ultimate questions of life and death mm -hmm. and that made the culture itself just much more risky and much wilder and a lot more fun and so suddenly going to a gay bar wasn't lame because you could go to a gay bar and like crash worship or millions of dead cops would play it wasn't like just listening to you know don't leave me this way over and over and over <laughs> so yeah. well, i mean this, is what, still this cool. is what drew was like dancing to wearing the fish Word. so it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> like it wasn't probably like what you're with thinking with tears in my eyes <laughs> no no that's the other with like the uh, tears yeah. coming down shake as... it don't break it um okay so martin i was going to ask you um what is what's the concept behind the new album that's coming out right now 
Uh, if you want to, okay, you, you, you want to skip Three that? Three cool we can, questions. We, we can skip that if you want. Um, it's telepathy. It's, no, it's, yeah, telepathy is the short answer. Okay, because I know that in, in the album you're trying to, you're seeking these connections between things. And I'm listening to it and you're I... You're seeking these connections. No. Well, no, no, I listened I, to it and I kept hearing about triangles. And I, you know, I knew I'd do a song there with triangles and stuff. But I, I wonder, uh, do you... Do you want me to give you the, give the speech? I mean, I'll give no, the speech. No, no, he doesn't want the speech. No, it's, it's okay if you want to. <laughs> it's, a talk, it's a talk show. Speech, All right. Speech, so speech, here's, speech, speech, here, speech, 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 speech. Here is the idea. All right. So Drew, only Drew knows the idea of our new album. And so I really, in a way, I can't answer this question. But okay. the idea of the new album is that only Drew knows the idea of the new album. And so we, in a, in a series of psychic experiments, and now, theoretically, you all know the idea of our new album because Drew is sending it to you right now. Okay, so here's how we scientifically did it. We would lay someone down in a dark room that we weren't in and with a video camera on them and we would ask them if we did this with Ed. Yeah. And what a night it was. And what a night it was. And it they was got me dinner too. Beautiful, yeah. sweet, no, sweet love. No, I wasn't like uh, that. He was by himself We're joking. with a video camera was by on him wearing uh, ping pong balls over his eyes and listening to white noise. And we asked the people receiving Drew's uh, psychic transmission to report whatever it is that they were seeing or hearing. And we then, then later we would watch the videotapes and see what they reported while they were receiving this. And we made the songs, we made songs out of what they described. And in the case of hugely talented psychics such as yourself a traitor we have invited a... people to come back and sing fragments of the transcripts from their own psychic session well only ed actually i learned everything i know from mistress cleo one at a time remember her mistress cleo yeah! your husband yeah, so in your some... husband's a cheating on you so she's a russian cases, or irish in some cases like people <laughs> your husband's uh, your husband your, i'm Car uh, she's caribbean it doesn't doesn't matter let's give it I'm happy to hear it. Yeah, um, he, he came out with, he came out, like, Ed came out with this, like, insane psychedelic, like, you rambling me, monologue sure. that really I mean, go figure. <laughs> just made you want to make a song about it. And, of uh, course. Okay. Now, and it's out now on yeah. the Thrill Jockey Records. Yeah, Thrill so Jockey Records. February 19th, actually. And then we're going to, you know, I know we have to wrap it up and move on, but um, from what I gather, you know, it, it seems like, I'm going to talk to you about this, you want to remove emotion from your music and boil. Oh, boy. Okay, I should talk like Werner Herzog. You want to? I can't talk like Werner Herzog. Nobody can talk like Werner Herzog. Emotion, it seems like you want to remove the emotion from the music and boil it down, but doesn't this kind of repackaging of na nature, like, you know, these orchestras of, like, surgical noises and the seeking of an essence in the object, like recording a shirt, does that not seem existential, like you're seeking some semblance of continuity in all things? I mean, that striving feels emotional, like you want that to be. Is God a tuning fork? <laughs> You mean is, is is God equivalent to the totality of what is, and so an ontological account of waves as vibration would include everything physical, and thus God? Is that what you mean? Yeah, because you guys are like atheists. <laughs> yeah, what you're proposing is like a vibe. I guess we could call it a vibrational ontotheology. Um, I think Speak we, English, buddy. I think we could do that, but only <laughs> only if we if we turn to a Spinoza-like position in which we yeah. say God or nature. Deus sive mit natura in, in Latin. So the point is that God, God, We're so would, drop, impressed. No. God would drop out of the equation and then no, we we're just you. talking about yeah. nature. And yeah, I think, I think not making music that's emotional porn is a form of respect for the listener's emotions to let them happen. Now, an emotional porn would be like, like Kiki D and Helen John being like, don't go break in my home. You know, that. Or exactly. um, Skater Boy or um, Kesha. No, no, yes. Kesha's cool. You can fill in the blanks yourself. Phil yeah. Collins, you two know hearts. Where I'm going. Okay, now, uh, no, but yeah, so I mean, because it seems like you, it does feel spiritual. Even when I listen to it, it, it feels like there is always this kind of, like you're saying, searching for that continuity and that connection and that nexus, almost like the kind of pre-Socratic idea of Aperon or something. Like, what is this thing that connects everything? Like, what is this? Is this a table or is it now a can table? You know, and it's like, I feel like your music kind of touches on that. And I think it's awesome. And, you know, just... Thank you. Now, okay. And I also want to say... Uh, uh, Martin, I know that I drive you insane talking about Half Moon Cookies from Utica. Um, and I think I've driven... I love you, Ed. <laughs> now, about 
three years ago, um, oh. the Hemstraws Half Moon Company in Utica. Now, okay, now you guys know these as black and whites, but they were invented in Utica, and they're half gourmet chocolate, half uh, nice, like, whipped sandy kind of cream. You can just half look moon, at it and make, it, make the judgment for yourself. <laughs> this isn't the Who Owns the Game, by the way. This is just a Half Moon cookie. Um, now, they call it Half Moon because one side's chocolate and the other side's white or yeah. vanilla. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, <laughs> always... No, 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 but anyways... Um, uh, a few years ago, I, I contacted Hemstraw's Cookie Company. I'm like, please send me a crate of your cookies. I'm going to talk about them on the show. We're going to promote them. we got a huge show. This is when like 20 people are coming to the show. And um, they were like, oh, yeah, we'll do that. You know, totally. And then I got the cookies. I ended up eating all of them myself. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, my girlfriend ate most of them. Why? No, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm blamed. No, I, I ate most of them. I, oh. I'm, trying, I'm trying to put the blame. No, but anyway, so I never did. And then they sent me an email, be like, hey, send us that video. And I'm like, oh, I'll get around to it. So I never did. And here it's makeup time. So I'm going to give now. And uh, when Martin and I have hung out, I talk about these probably every 20 minutes. And, and Martin, like, uh, he's, he's kind of over me talking about the half moon cookie. And yeah, just, uh, but I want you to try and taste what I've been talking about. I'd like that very Do much. It. And Do see. It. Do it. And, and there's one for you too, sir. Eat the cookie. And tell me. <laughs> Hemstraws cookies. And you saw it here, folks. Hemstraws, send us another crate. That's a good cookie. That is a good cookie. And you guys. I mean, Hemstraws Half Moon Cookies from Utica, New York. I want to thank you guys so much for coming on the show. This is awesome. And, um, and so, anyways. And now we're going to, uh, I, I want to show you, and I want you guys to see this. Will you guys stay here for this? <laughs> we have oh, um, a movie that I made myself. I mean, I make films now. And uh, it's called, I want to let it speak for itself. Um, and we're going to show it now. We made this about last weekend. And I'm really excited. And there's theme music for this, too. Yes, there is. No, there's not. <laughs> um, and here it is. Here's the movie. We'll see it. A movie dumps the clown! No. Oh, it's so great to have the house all to myself. I'm so relaxed right now. This feels great. Ah! Uh, who are you? I'm dumps the clown, bitch! It's shit time! Yeah! Get the fuck out of my house! Oh, contraire, it's time for you to do that you do that you do so well. <laughs> oh, ah, oh, now my bathtub is filled with shit. Ah, oh, I shit in my own bathtub. Oh, oh. See you later, stupid. <laughs> 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 Dumps, you can't get me, I'm not even near a bathroom. No problem, kid. Let me fold this one in. <laughs> oh, 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 I shit my pants. <laughs> when will I ever learn? I'll never get away from dumps. like a real freak show lately. Yeah, well I keep seeing a clown that makes me shit in my pants, okay? Like a clown that makes you shit in your pants. Mm. Like you have no control, like, oh God, there's a clown. No, I gotta shit my pants. Like that? Fuck you. Hey. So you mean to tell me that there's an imaginary clown that makes you defecate against your own will? <laughs> He's right behind you. Jesus! Oh, 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 oh. Time to poop. Oh, 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 oh. Out of my oh, way! Oh, oh, I got shit! Somebody! Poop. Would 
we've been dating for quite some time now. And well, it's pretty obvious that I like you. When I think about what's important in my life, you're number one. It's time for number two! Oh. Yeah. You just got dumped! I can't stop this shit from coming out of my butthole. Take a 10-minute break, and then we'll be right back, so smoke them if you got them, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Oh, I forgot. All right, folks, we'll be back. And now the break from the Ed Schrader Show, starring Ed Schrader. 